If it wasn't obvious, making a video game isn't easy. Along with creating a strong concept and design, you need to hire artists and programmers, budget everything accordingly, manage production cycles, squash bugs, coordinate teams, and much more over the years. Whether an indie or big budget game, it's hard to predict how some games will turn out. However, there are games which turn out even better than expected. Even if they look good, the final result is something truly special. Here are 15 games that are way better than they initially had any right to be. Inside Coming off the success of Limbo, Play Dead Games began working on Inside, a spiritual successor of sorts. Many praised the former for its presentation and gameplay in 2010. However, despite starting development on Inside two months later, it was a long journey for the studio. Revealed in 2014, it faced some delays, which wasn't enough to create overwhelming concern. At the time, many expected Inside to be good, but not that good. And it was more than good on release in 2016, earning a near-universal praise from critics. Its dark mood and storytelling were arguably superior to Limbo. The short length also exemplified how a video game could deliver pitch-perfect pacing with compelling puzzles and mechanics, on top of an incredible plot that didn't hold the player's hand. Several years later, Inside is remembered even more fondly than Limbo, transcending its indie identity to become one of the best games ever made. Metal Gear Acid While the Metal Gear series is generally known for its convoluted and epic story, with players expecting all kinds of over-the-top turns, everyone could more or less agree that the gameplay is consistently great throughout. But when Konami Computer Entertainment Japan, the precursor to Kojima Productions, announced a spin-off for the PlayStation Portable with collectible cards, turn-based and tactical RPG mechanics, and cell shaded visuals, no one knew what to think. Seeing such a bizarre spin-off wasn't new for the series, see Snake's Revenge, but this felt even more out of left field than normal. But perhaps the craziest part is that Metal Gear Acid wasn't a complete mess. Yeah, it received some mixed reviews for its difficulty and story, but the overall consensus is positive, mostly praising the turn-based gameplay and visuals. Whether it did well in sales or not, it was enough to bring about a sequel better in every regard. Fortunately, this wouldn't be the last Metal Gear spin-off experiment. Until Dawn Before it became a horror-centric developer, Supermassive Games was known for its work on Little Big Planet DLC and Killzone HD on the PS3. With Until Dawn, it took its first real foray into AAA development, promising a narrative horror experience in line with classic slasher horror films. When first revealed in 2012, it was originally a first-person title that utilized PlayStation Move, which was already concerning enough given the response to it. Over time, the team shifted to PS4 and a third-person perspective, leaning more into survival horror and narrative adventure. While many changes were made and plenty could have gone wrong, Supermassive persisted and finally released the game in August 2015, with little to no marketing from publisher Sony. It surpassed sales expectations and received a decent critical response, though opinions were mixed on the performance. Nevertheless, it was enough for Supermassive to delve further into horror and even release its games for multiple platforms. After recently releasing the Dark Picture Switchback VR, it's currently working on Directive 8020, the Season 2 premiere of the Dark Pictures Anthology. Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle Let's be real, when the concept art for Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle leaked, there was some skepticism. Mario, as in the Super Mario teaming up with the Rabbids? Why wasn't he with Rayman, another platformer icon? Why is he using guns? When eventually revealed, Kingdom Battle was confirmed to be a turn-based tactical RPG. The Rabbids had entered the world of the Mushroom Kingdom and Mario, Peach, and Luigi had to work together with them to restore order. The response was generally positive compared to the initial art leak. However, there are so many ways this could have gone wrong. Count the number of good tactical RPGs that the developer made on one hand. And yet, the result was incredibly fun, with some sick combat, challenging scenarios, and gorgeous visuals. Even the story was fun to play, with the Rabbids serving as strong foils for Mario and his friends. Unfortunately, despite being a success, its follow-up, Sparks of Hope, underperformed in comparison. Metal Gear Revengeance Metal Gear Rising's initial announcement came as a shock, originally known as Metal Gear Solid Rising. It was confirmed to star Raiden and focus more on hack and slash in action, which was insane considering the series' penchant for stealth. 
The Zandatsu mechanic encouraged slicing up enemies for rewards. However, stealth mechanics were still persistent and killing humans wouldn't yield rewards. Development wasn't going well though, but even after facing cancellation, Kojima Productions teamed with Platinum Games resulting in the re-reveal of the title as Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Stealth was present but sidelined in favor of high-octane action in a new setting and story. The rest, as they say, is history. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance received strong critical acclaim on its release, and while it didn't achieve the same sales heights as the mainline games, its combat, music, and insane story moments are still the stuff of legend. The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker Were you there when The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker was first revealed? If so, then you'll remember the screams of rage vividly. First, some context. This was the first Legend of Zelda title for the Nintendo GameCube and follow-up to the Nintendo 64's brilliant offerings. It was a new mainline Zelda, so expectations were sky high. When Nintendo finally revealed it, The Wind Waker had an animated cel-shaded art style, a big departure from previous efforts. Forget everything else, like the sailing mechanics or how the art style remains one of the best examples of cel shading ever. Some hardcore fans just refuse to acknowledge the game, leading to lower sales and a grittier style for Twilight Princess, the next game. However, those who gave it a chance discovered a rich adventure with an incredible story, fun combat, challenging battles, and yes, some of the more annoying ways to hunt Triforce pieces in the series. It was, and remains, a classic. Watch Dogs 2 Watch Dogs had a mountain of hype going into its release. Whether it was the promise of superpower hackerman abilities or the visual fidelity, it looked to be another hit for the publisher. However, over the years, its graphics started getting downgraded to much backlash from fans. It did well in sales, but was also criticized for its numerous bugs, performance issues, and less than enticing gameplay. Watch Dogs 2 immediately had its work cut out, ditching Chicago for the more vibrant San Francisco Bay Area. It offered a more lighthearted and likable character in Marcus Holloway. The world design, traversal, driving, and hacking mechanics were significantly improved and or overhauled, providing a fun playground for fans. It was a definitive improvement in every way over the original. However, despite good reviews at launch, many were reluctant to take the plunge due to being burned before as evidenced by the low pre-order numbers. The developer surprisingly expected this, and sure enough, as word of mouth spread, sales increased and Watch Dogs 2 did better over time. It went on to sell over 10 million copies as of May 2020. Metroid Prime Metroid Prime blew away all expectations at launch, becoming one of the highest rated games of the year and one of the Nintendo GameCube's highest selling titles. Despite taking some time to get used to the controls, it truly embodied the Metroid Prime spirit while delivering its own compelling gameplay, progression, and epic boss fights, such as the brilliance of its design that even the recently released remaster for Nintendo Switch is one of the highest rated games of this year. Will it help push Metroid Prime 4 closer to completion? We can only hope. Sonic Mania Sonic Team had its ups and downs through the decades with 3D Sonic platformers, but we've received some genuinely fun results like Sonic Generations, Sonic Colors, the recently released Sonic Frontiers, and much more. However, a traditional 2D side-scrolling Sonic title felt like a fantasy. Sonic 4 is technically 2.5D and didn't receive the best reception. So when a new 2D side-scroller not developed by Sonic Team was announced, reactions were mixed. Not completely negative since the developer Christian Whitehead and Headcanon were known for their work on Sonic fan games, not completely positive because they were still working under Sega's mandates and creating something that paid homage to the classics while forging a new path forward. Lo and behold, Sonic Mania was a massive hit. As it turns out, fans wanted some fun 2D Sonic platforms. Even critics agreed it was an incredible title due to its visuals, new stages, and gameplay being perfectly in line with the classics. It was released in August 2017 and sold over 1 million copies worldwide by April 2018. Wolfenstein The New Order To be clear, Wolfenstein 2009 wasn't a bad game. It wasn't an amazing game, but it wasn't terrible. However, it also felt like it didn't quite embody the essence of what made the classic shooter so great. So when Machine Games revealed Wolfenstein The New Order in May 2013, there was excitement, but also some concern that the franchise was slipping further and further away from its core identity, embracing a more cinematic AAA approach. 
on release in 2014, those fears turned out to be unfounded. While the New Order did have a more heavy-handed story and cutscenes, the fast-paced, high-octane action was more pronounced than ever. It was an adrenaline shot for fans offering unforgiving difficulties and numerous approaches for slaying zombies. Of course, having a good story with a strong mission design, compelling characters, and a fresh new direction didn't hurt either. Wolfenstein The New Order sold well enough and received some acclaim from critics, along with establishing machine games as a big deal in the FPS space. It received sequels like the standalone expansion The Old Blood, Wolfenstein II The New Colossus, and the admittedly terrible Young Blood. Hi-Fi Rush Xbox's first developer direct was looking to be a solid, if safe, show for updates. We'd learn more about Forza Motorsport and Redfall, and then move on with our lives. However, the publisher revealed and shadow dropped a brand new title, Hi-Fi Rush from Tango Gameworks. It also did so with what looked to be overtly cheesy dialogue from its protagonist Chai. While not the best first impression, that was thankfully just the first minute, as Hi-Fi Rush was revealed to be an extremely cool-looking hack-and-slash rhythm game with awesome mechanics and combat. Even the story looked fun, filling that Saturday morning cartoon niche with good humor. The best part? The actual game was even better. Whether it was the over-the-top boss fights, the gorgeous environments, or just how well the hack-and-slash mechanics gelled with the rhythm game's aspects. Not only did Hi-Fi Rush garner acclaim from critics and cross 2 million players since its release in January, but it also proved that Xbox had some promising surprises. That alone is enough reason to feel excited about the brand in 2023. Little Nightmares Announced in 2014 as Hunger, before receiving a teaser in 2015 and then disappearing until later in 2016, Little Nightmares had a weird development period. There was some buzz when Bandai Namco Entertainment announced itself as the publisher, and the name changed to Little Nightmares. But Tarsier was a relatively unknown developer and a platformer like this could fizzle out in many different ways. Fortunately, it didn't because Little Nightmares wasn't just a platformer. Yeah, you had to solve some puzzles and occasionally platform, but it was more of a survival horror title, as the main character Six attempts to escape the nightmarish maw. Little Nightmares told a compelling narrative laden with mystery and surreal horror. Even if its controls weren't the best, it received a strong critical acclaim and sold over 2 million copies as of May 2020. Not bad for a new IP from an unknown independent game studio. Dredge Someone at Black Salt Games must have posited, hey, what if fishing but also cosmic horror, before making Dredge? As a concept, it sounds like a perfect match. Many people like fishing games, so why not insert horror into it? A compelling art style that mixed the calm with supernatural and comfortable further drew people in. However, there is one of those concepts that could have failed for several reasons. Maybe the fishing wasn't fun, or the horror was too poorly executed. There may be too much management and grinding. And while some concerns remain, Dredge did well with its core concepts. It's almost reminiscent of strange horticulture. Some fun gameplay with enough things to collect, but with a compelling story and a world that draws you in without letting up. Dredge received positive reviews from critics with a plus 80 metascore across Xbox Series X, PC, PS5, and Nintendo Switch, not to mention an overwhelmingly positive score on Steam. Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor Let's be honest, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor is a Batman Arkham Asylum ripoff clearly. Of course, as time went on, the game highlighted the combat, which took cues from Batman Arkham Asylum and City, and something called the Nemesis System that could randomly generate powerful enemies. It wasn't until the game was released that we saw how well everything came together. The Nemesis System didn't just give you sworn enemies to fight. Each orc had a unique personality and powers that necessitated different strategies. Furthermore, you could manipulate the hierarchy of orcs to obtain more information, working your way up to the captains to find the killer of Talion's family. Of course, it also didn't hurt that the combat had some unique abilities and twists to distinguish it from the Batman Arkham series, and the world was well designed with memorable activities. Firewatch When Campo Santo first revealed Firewatch in 2014, there was more curiosity than anything else. It was a first-person adventure game that seemed little more than a walking simulator. The team was known for its work on Telltale's The Walking Dead and Mark of the Ninja, so it had some design chops. But what made this so unique? What exactly was Firewatch? As time passed, there was an aura of mystery around the game and how this seemingly peaceful forest held a dark secret. 
As Henry, a volunteer fire lookout, you spoke with Supervisor Delilah over the radio, and could choose different responses that influence their relationship. You could also do random things in the world just for the heck of it. But clearly, something strange was going on, right? Not quite. Firewatch does have a compelling core mystery, but it turned out to be more of a mood piece than anything else. Despite a somewhat disappointing ending, it felt nice to wander in the wilderness, experimenting with the world and seeing how it would react. Even with some rough dialogue, the subplot with Delilah was fun, and maybe more than a little heartbreaking. Hey, did you know that we at Gaming Bolt upload new videos every day? Stick around, drop a like, subscribe, and hit that bell, and let us know what kind of content you'd like to see in the future with a comment below.